where you live and welcome to today's live. I'm Chef AJ and if this is your first time seeing me, I created this program, these broadcasts just to create a sense of community and connection during the time of sheltering, but enough people seem to have interest in it that we're going to keep going. We're not going to be doing more than one a day though and usually it's going to be at 11 a.m. So today we have another fantastic cooking demo by somebody who many would consider to be plant-based royalty. She's the author of a couple of cookbooks. I have her first one which is called Plant Pure Nation. And what I love about her recipes is they're not just healthy and delicious, but they're not that difficult to make. And they are with ingredients that everybody has heard of. So these are accessible to everyone. And she's going to be making some lemon poppy seed pancakes with a strawberry compote. And if you haven't figured out who it is yet, her name is Kim Campbell. I had her brother-in-law on last week, Dr. Tom Campbell. I'll have her father-in-law on Friday, Dr. Colin Campbell. And I'm sure I'll have her husband, Nelson, on as soon as we book a date. Please welcome Kim Campbell. Thanks for having me, AJ. I'm really excited to be on your show. Um, you're a great chef, by the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little shout out because I have cooked many of your recipes and have your books and um, really enjoy all of your knowledge around culinary. You're kind of a wizard when it comes to food. So, um, but I'm excited to do this today and talk to you about food. I have a lot of things I'd love to talk to you about. I actually wish you were here right beside me because I think I could pick your brain a little bit. Um, but today we're making lemon poppy seed pancakes and there's a little bit of a story behind the pancakes. Um, I'm not a huge pancake person. Um, growing up, my mom used to make them with white flour and eggs and oil and milk. And they just didn't really taste like anything. They tasted like, I don't know, air. And they never made me feel good. So I never requested pancakes. But when I first met Nelson, which was a long time ago, 30 plus years ago. We were 16 years old when we met. And the one of the first times I had ever went over to the Campbell house, um, Karen had made pancakes. She made pancakes for six kids around the table plus me, so that was seven. And then her and Colin, so that's nine. She made pancakes for nine people. If you can imagine the stacks that she had going on. And then the thing that she did that I loved was she had the fruit compotes. She had like five different kinds of compotes going on. And I, we never did that. We always had maple syrup on it and just your traditional buttermilk pancakes. So um, anyways, I'm excited to show this one to you because I decided that I was gonna learn to like pancakes. And so we have these about every two or three weeks. I'm more of a savory person and this is more of a sweet dish, but we really like these because I feel like they're there's substance to them, you know, they're, they're, they're a little bit more dense than a traditional fluffy pancake. Um, but it's, it's oatmeal, oats, it's quinoa, believe it or not. It's potatoes, it's Japanese sweet potatoes. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. And then um, some lemons and some poppy seeds and some soy milk. I didn't use any sugar today. I'm going to use dates and I'm going to use oranges. So I'm excited about that. That sounds um, great. You're right. You know, it's really about the sauce, isn't it, Kim? Whether we're eating a savory uh, dish or a sweet dish, food is just a, a blank slate until you color it. Right. It is. It's all about the sauce. In fact, most mornings I have sauce in my refrigerator all the time going. So most mornings, this is what I eat for breakfast is sauce. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit because I know you've been a lifelong vegan for like 30 some years, AJ. I'm actually 43. Wow. I think Almost as long as you've been alive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm 56. So I've been at this since I was um, 16. But I have to tell you, people always say, did you turn vegan right away? I didn't. I, you know, when I met Colin and, and Nelson, he was just doing his research in China. So I started having this aha moment because I never liked meat anyways. It was never my thing. So and I was always interested in health. So that's when I started dibbling, dallying in, in it and um, playing around with food and got better and better and better at it. But, you know, back in the 80s, they didn't have vegan cookbooks. I mean, there, there was like a handful of them. There was Arrowhead Mills. That was one of my favorite ones. And then there was Moosewood, which wasn't really vegan. It was vegetarian. And there wasn't the internet. So we just had to take our old traditional recipes and make them plant-based. So that's what I love to do. I love to take something that everybody loves and make it plant-based and 
clean it up, I, I call it, veganize it, whatever. Yeah. So Jackie I'm sure you wants, probably- Jackie wants to know, are you in your own home kitchen right now? No, I'm not. I am in the Plant Pure Nation office building and we have built a little studio kitchen. So there's lots of wires and lights around me. And we do, um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but every Thursday night we do a Plant Pure Kitchen live show here on Thursdays at 630. So the camera goes live. I think we've done six or seven shows already. And um, you can sign up for that. AJ has the link. You can sign up for that if you're interested in it. Um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's sort of a cook along. So we give people the recipe, we give them uh, the grocery list and the appliances that they'll need. And then the idea is that they just cook with me on Thursday night. So sometimes the shows take about 45 minutes, but it's a lot of fun. So no, this isn't my own home kitchen. I love that idea, like a cook along. It's like a sing along, except for you cook. <laughs> sing along right <laughs> yeah we have a lot of fun my daughter um comes in with me on thursdays and she cooks with me as well so i'll introduce her to you in a little bit um kathy but, wanted to know what kind of sauces that you keep in your refrigerator so today we're making a strawberry compote and actually i'm going to turn it on so it will start cooking um but i i tend to um sorry noisy i tend to go to costco and i buy those big organic bags of fruit i get one every week and i dump it in a pot like this and i just heat up the frozen fruit and then i add chia seeds to it sometimes i'll make a corn i use cornstarch but most of the time i use a white chia seed or a black chia seed and if it's a little bit of a tart fruit like this, these strawberries aren't the sweetest because I didn't pick them. I might add a little bit of orange juice or something to sweeten them up, but they really don't need anything. I made a cherry sauce earlier. So this is going to heat up. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and start the recipe if you don't have any more. Questions. Absolutely. And I'll post all those links you gave me and explain what they are. And of course, in the show notes in the YouTube page, it'll be there as well if people don't see it right now. Yeah, and we, we can just talk as we go. So some of the components of this recipe, and I want to talk about potatoes because I think that um, you are a kindred spirit, AJ, when it comes to potatoes, because I love potatoes. And this happens to be one of my favorite and I, favorites. I opened it up because it's a Japanese sweet potato. Um, and they're, they're really light inside, they're kind of a yellowish hue. Um, and they're sweet. I'll, I'll describe it this way, and you can correct me, AJ. I think it's a cross between a white potato and a yellow sweet, an orange sweet potato. It's not, it's, it's a little bit more firm, but, but it's not quite as firm as a white potato. And I just prefer it. If you can find them, sometimes they're a little hard to source. I've gotten them at the Asian market. I've gotten them at Whole Foods, but it's hard to find them in mainstream grocery stores. And they are just a little bit more expensive. Um, they're just, whatever they are, they're absolutely delicious. They're wonderful. So we're going to use that today. I'll turn this down just a little bit. And, and I'm, posting wanna... the, I'm posting the link for the recipe, Kim, so people can just click on it if they want to follow along. Okay. I also want to um, let you know that the, the beauty of what you're seeing here um, is because we have these camera people around that are doing a, such a beautiful job. I love to go back there and watch the pictures because they get really close to the food so you can see it. So hopefully you'll get a chance to see all that today too. Um, and that's what we do with Kitchen Live. You can really get up close and, and see the food. So this is sticking to the pan just a little bit. So as it starts to stick, you can add, you can add orange juice. You can buy orange juice. I happen to have these little oranges and I'm just gonna squeeze orange juice. You know, fresh tastes so much better than, um, than just buying regular juice. So I'm gonna use a whole orange juice, whole orange in this. And this will give it a little bit of sweetness. I also like to make strawberry rhubarb sauce. So I didn't do that today because I thought that might overcomplicate things, but it's really nice to buy rhubarb, cut it into really small little dices, cook it with your strawberries and it cooks down. It gets a little bit stringy um, but it's so good because rhubarb is really sour and it's in season right now, as are the strawberries. So then, no. what? That's a, that's, I'm sorry for interrupting, but that is literally the one thing I have never cooked with. Stra uh, rhubarb? Yeah. 
So I think it's because maybe AJ, you're from you're from California, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's something that grows real commonly in the northeast. My father grew so much of it that he was always asking one of us to bake him a strawberry rhubarb pie. We just come out our ears. So we, we had a lot of it when we were kids. I don't use it a lot anymore, partly because you do have to add a, a fair amount of sweetness to it because it's real, real tart. Um, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm mashing these down. Just take a masher and this can also be a jam. If you want it really, really thick, you just add more chia seeds to it. So I'm going to turn it off and then put some white chia seeds. So I went online and ordered white chia seeds. There's black chia seeds and there's white chia seeds. Just because it's strawberries, I thought it would be a little bit prettier. I ordered it online. It's, it's really hard to find. You can use black chia seeds. I'm just using white because, because it's the AJ show. <laughs> pretty. Just a little prettier. Yeah. So they take a while because they absorb moisture and they plump up and they get their, they're like a gelatin and they're really good for you. They contain omega threes. Um, and they're just, there's a lot of fiber in them and they're wonderful. So, so now it's done and we're good to go. So then I, I took a sweet potato with a Japanese deep, uh, potato and I boiled it. My oldest daughter is in Washington right now and she tested this recipe for me. And she air fried, she air fries everything. She air fried um, her potatoes and they work. So you can do you can put them in the oven and bake them. You can air fry them. Um, I just steamed them. And what I do, this is going to be way more than I need because one big Japanese sweet potato, you really only need, I'm going to get under the camera so you can see it. You really only need about a half of a Japanese sweet potato. That's good. Kim, there's a question from Michelle. Do you grind your chia seeds? If you're using them as an egg replacer, you, you're supposed to, but I will tell you I never do. I just, I just put them in water and let them sit. But no, I don't grind my chia seeds. Um, in fact, when I'm using an egg replacer, I tend to use flax meal just because it's what I have on hand and it's a little bit easier. So I'll set that aside because we're going to need it in a few minutes. It's, it's not beautiful, pretty, but I actually make lemon bars with this potato, with a Japanese sweet potato. It's really fun. And it's on, I think it's on our website. You can find it there. So I, I just want to discuss this because my kitchen, I have so many appliances and I know you too, too. I know you do too, AJ. Um, in fact, you've inspired me to get certain things. I'm still, I still am going to hold out of that Breville air fryer though. I'm going to hold out on it. <laughs> I have an air fryer and it's, it's much smaller than yours. But um, I think the thing about our kitchens, you have to think of them as your, your toolbox and people invest so many things in you know their cars and their houses and why not invest in your kitchen it's it's a good thing to invest in it makes cooking easier especially plant-based cooking because you've got choppers and blenders and food processors and i have all of those things and i use them quite a bit so i think it's a good investment to get things like an instant pot um, a food processor is essential and a really nice blender. When my kids went off to college, I did not buy them this because this is the Cadillac of blenders. So they bought a Nutribullet, right? <laughs> and they use it a lot. They're great. They're about $120. They don't last as long as this. Um, okay, where was I? So I'm going to make um, flour with this and I'm going to use whole grains to make flour. I'm going to start with oats, about a cup of oats. Um, they're gluten-free. This is a gluten-free recipe. I've gotten so most of my recipes are gluten-free or I have a substitute because it seems like so many people are gluten-free these days. So we're going to put a cup of flour in there and I think it's a half a cup of, is it a half or a quarter? It's a half a cup of quinoa. And I buy, I have all my stuff here, I buy the um, rinsed and washed organic um, quinoa. Quinoa has something on them called saponins, 
and those are not bad, but saponins are sort of like, they're natural pesticides that exist on the seed and bugs don't like to get into it. And so it gives it a little bit of a bitter taste, but the more you get used to quinoa, the less you notice that bitter taste. And actually saponins are really good for you. They're, they've been shown to decrease um, blood lipids. Um, they have antioxidants and I'm sure a lot more. So anyways, I think that quinoa is a really, really good grain seed to eat. So I'm gonna put this on my um, blender. I have craziness below me, so if you hear anything fall, you'll know that I've just tipped something over. Just so I'll put it on my. You. Oh, I just want to read you a very nice because uh, if I don't read these, the comments do disappear. From Tina, she says, "Out of all my cookbooks, hers is the one that my family likes the most. We have loved every recipe that we have tried." Thank you. We um, we used a lot of those recipes in Jump Starts. Um, and I really wanted it to be a resource for people because people kept asking us for recipes and I never really thought I would write a cookbook. I never thought I could write a cookbook. But when I got together with another chef who was, we were, were working with at the time, I realized we had just so many recipes. So we put them on the computer and came up with the first cookbook, which is Plant Pure Nation, which is the green one. And some of you don't know that I've written a second one. I don't know why people don't know I've written a second one. I, I wish I had it. known because I would have promoted it. I honestly didn't know. So talk about it a little bit. I'll, se I'll send one to you, AJ. Um, I just had a lot more recipes that I wanted to um, put on paper. And my uh, people ask me, what's the difference? The whole idea of doing a theme with your cookbook, I didn't want to be locked into a theme. So this is just more a lot of you know, traditional recipes that are made plant-based and things that I've really enjoyed. My sister likes this one better. She says it's easier. It has a ton of sauces in it um, because my husband is the sauce king. Everything has to have a sauce in his book. So, and you can get it on our website, you can get it on Amazon. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. It's gonna be a little bit loud and our guys will probably turn the volume down a little bit. That's okay. So guys, thanks so much when you share this broadcast. I appreciate it very much. And Brenda, I'm not sure what you mean. I read your mind maybe because I posted the recipe for the lemon bars. I looked it up. The one she was referring to, it looks delicious. And I posted a link as well as links to the book, the meals, the pods. Uh, there were so far five links, but don't worry because this is available immediately after the broadcast. And all you have to do is click more on YouTube and you'll be able to see everything there. Maybe not immediately, but within an hour. One thing I, I did want to say, and I, you know what, when I get nervous, I kind of skip, I had notes and I had things I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> but um, one thing I didn't say in the beginning, AJ, is it's so wonderful that you're doing all these videos for people, especially now during this time, because the most important thing that we can do for our health is eat plant-based. Eating plant-based doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the virus. You're, it doesn't mean you're not going to get the virus, but the the severity of which you will get it could be a lot less if, you, if we're taking care of our bodies and our, and our health. So um, we did a global jumpstart through Plant Pure Communities, which has been great. We're just finishing up our second global jumpstart. Um, as Jody Cass, our director of uh, PPC, um, she was the one that came up with this brilliant idea of doing a global jumpstart flattening the curve. But what you're doing is putting all these plant-based doctors in, on your show this month. And I have watched every single one of them, because I want to know what they're saying. I want to know what all the plant-based doctors are saying, because we're all a little bit nervous. And what my father-in-law has said has helped me to be a little more relaxed about this and know that we have some control over our health and that we can, you know, reverse things like diabetes and we can lose weight and feel all the benefits from a plant-based diet. So thank you for interviewing the doctors. I've watched I'd say almost every single one of them. Well, thank you. And it's my pleasure to do that. And I'll keep interviewing them as long as they want to come on. And so far, actually, all of them said yes. And the only one that said no just changed his mind. <laughs> well, just keep doing them because I, I really, it's very, very inspiring. And I think that people need to hear this. They need to know that they have control over what they eat, um, over their bodies. 
the, the thing that's so disturbing is nowhere are we hearing about this. You know, we, Nelson and I get up and we watch the news, we listen to the news on the radio, and no one's talking about plant-based nutrition or nutrition or getting healthy. And I think that's the best thing we can do to guard against COVID. So, all right, so I'm, I'm digressing here. So next thing I'm gonna do is put a cup and three quarters of soy milk. And a lot of people always ask me what I use. I, I tend to use this milk, which is West soy. And the reason I use it is it's, it's organic and all that is in it is soybeans and milk. But find a plant-based milk that you like and repeat. But just make sure you look at ingredients because so many of the plant-based milks are full of fillers and sugars and flavorings. So be careful about that. So I used a cup and three quarters of soy milk. And then I'm gonna put in a cup of, measure this, a cup of potatoes. So that'll be my lunch tomorrow. All those leftover potatoes. We eat a lot of potatoes. All right, so one cup of potatoes. And because I like pancakes to be a little bit sweet, I'm gonna add six dates to this. And that's really your personal preference. You don't have to add any dates. You could add more if you're just transitioning and you're kind of used to sweet things. But six is, is perfect for me. And then I'm gonna cut a lemon in half and juice it. I believe it calls for about a quarter cup of lemon juice. And my daughter made these and she said she used a lot more lemon juice. So if you like it more lemony, then use two lemons. So. There's a question on what type of griddle do you have? I have a ceramic titanium Bella griddle that I got at Walmart. And I'll tell you why I got it. Um, I got it for cooking classes. It doesn't stick. You'll see, it does an amazing job. In fact, I'm gonna turn it on now so we get it hot. You wanna make sure you get your griddle hot. But it's really hard to, um, to cook things plant-based without oil if you don't have an, a really good non-stick griddle. So it's one of those things you just invest in. This was not expensive. I think I paid 35 or $40 and I've used it a lot. So. Deborah wants to know, what can you use if you can't find Japanese sweet potato? I, I often substitute the Hannah yam, but if she can't find Japanese, maybe she can't find Hannah either. You know, I've never found Hannah yams, AJ. Um, my daughter oh, loves those. I can't find them. Oh my God, they're my favorite. Have you tried an ethnic market? Sometimes a, a Latino market or an Asian market will often have them and, and much less expensive than Whole Foods. They're, and sometimes they're called white sweet potatoes or Jersey yams or they're really, really good. Okay, I'll do that. Um, but the question is, if you can't find a Hannah yam and you can't find a Japanese sweet potato, you can use a regular sweet potato. Just use a regular sweet potato. I have a, a, a recipe on Plant Pure Nation. I think it's called sweet potato pancakes and waffles. It's essentially the same thing. When I was on the cruise, I demonstrated this, this very recipe, but I used a regular sweet potato. I left out all the lemony stuff. And instead I used um, pumpkin pie spice. It was really nice. So just the quinoa and the oats and the milk always stay the same. You can change the potatoes and you can change the flavorings. That's how I cook. Sometimes it's the same recipe. I've just made little substitutions along the way. I think I've got everything in here except for, I'm gonna put a little bit of vanilla. Let me know if I missed anything. Cause when I get talking, I do that. Okay. This is a new vanilla. You have somebody watching from BAKU, Baku. So I said, where is Baku? And they said it is in Azer, Azerbaijan, which again, I don't know where that is because I skipped fourth grade, so I never learned geography. Anyway, so <laughs> it's nice that you have That's a global cool. audience. I wonder what a, time it is there. Yeah, a global audience. Yeah. All right, so then I'm going to blend it.
Jennifer, I'll ask her your questions about if she soaks the dates in water as soon as she can hear me again. Um, I find with Majul, you don't have to because they're so moist, but with the Deglet Nor, they're much drier. Oh, plantain. That's a, that's a great idea, Jody Lynn. She's suggesting plantain as a sub for if somebody can't find the Japanese sweet potato. Oh, that's a, that would be an interesting, that would be very interesting. Um, thought I had a spatula. And guys have been posting the recipe several times and can't stop lying. Thank you for your comment. It's, it, I appreciate that, uh, that other people are explaining why sharing is caring. And, and Kim, they want to know if you soak your dates first. You know, normally I absolutely soak my dates. I didn't on that one because um, because I forgot. That's it. But yeah, you want to soak your dates um, for sure. Because I tell you what, I've ruined a food processor because I didn't soak my dates. Um, so you would definitely want to do that. I thought I had all my gear up here, but I don't. So Jeffrey, are you saying that Organic Laser Farm is a place that she could get the Japanese sweet potatoes? Deb, answering them. What I love about you guys is you answer each other's questions because I try to, but I don't like to jump screens to look things up. I'm I know. Always worried you know, that's. I love teaching cooking classes because you. It's incredible what what I learn from people. All right, so I have my microplane and I have an extra lemon, and I'm going to go ahead and zest a full lemon in here. And again, my daughter zested two. I think she's got issues with lemon, but she loved it. So go ahead and do that because it just gives it that element of flavor. A lot of people don't think to zest their citrus. Do it. Zest your oranges. Zest your limes. If you like the taste of lime in something, give it a little zest. Oh, you know what? I'm going to get over the camera so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And it's also important that you get organic uh, lemons because you're, you're putting the outside peel right in directly in. Uh, question from Naomi, did you use Deglet Nor dates or Medjool dates? I think they were Medjool dates, yeah. And, and one thing, dates are wonderful, but because of the pandemic, you never know if you can get them or not. So what I've been doing is using raisins. Raisins are a dried fruit and there's a lot of sweetness in them. Um, so you can certainly use raisins if you're trying to sweeten up a, a dressing or a sauce. So I put my lemon juice in there, lemon, I'm sorry, lemon zest, and a little bit of your poppy seeds. I added two tablespoons of poppy seeds. It's really up to you. Now, if you look, I don't know if you can see this close up. Um, this is about the consistency that you want your pancakes. Some people like them a lot thicker, but this is a little bit of a heavier pancake. So you don't want them so thick, they're like muffins on the griddle. And you know, this, this batter tastes good all by itself. That's the thing about a pancake. Pancakes don't usually taste good. If you just eat the pancake, it's kind of boring. These are not boring. These are really amazing. We have a nice comment from Kathy. She has such a calm demeanor. I'm a spastic in the kitchen. And then you know, Whole, Food, Whole Food Plant Based Cooking Show says she's just as nice in person. Thank you. You know what's funny about that is the, the calm demeanor. I don't feel calm inside. I feel a little crazy. Because <laughs> you, you, know, you got a lot of things you're trying to think about. And then after the show, I'll think, oh, I forgot to put baking powder in that. But hopefully I put baking powder in this. I think I did. You know, I know, so I know what you mean. How long have you been teaching cooking classes, Tim? I've been at uh, Tim. You're not Tim. You're. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I've been teaching for about 20 years. How long have you been teaching cooking? Uh, I started about 10 years ago because I was teaching before that. I was teaching um, in public schools and private schools. And when we started doing jump starts, I still didn't quit my job. It wasn't until Nelson said, "You know, you should you should come on board and be the culinary." Um, person and do classes and then I started doing classes and I kind of got the bug and I really enjoyed it and I started doing them in my community so I would say 10 years in fact um, somebody in our pod said why don't you do online classes which is why we're doing online classes now 
But you know, you're right about learning things from every class you teach. I remember one time I was talking about uh, that if they didn't, you know, that if they were going to use soy sauce to use like a low sodium tamari and this person in the class raised their hand and said, oh, that's ridiculous. I go, what do you mean? She goes, well, I actually work for Kinkoman and all low sodium is, is we take the regular and add water to it. So just buy the regular and add water to yourself and save money. You know, I heard you say that on the cruise, you said that, and I tend to buy low sodium tamari sauce. That's a really smart. The other thing you said was coconut milks. Um, Same thing. You can buy the full fat and then just water it down because that's what they're doing. And you're basically paying just as much for water. You're right. You know, you actually had a trick on the cruise that um, enlightened me. And I actually do this trick with coconut milk. It's kind of off the subject, but if you don't have, you know how coconut milk comes in that can and you know, you I'm not going to use the whole can. It takes me forever to use a can. So I freeze it. But you said you use pure coconut and water if you're trying to get that flavor and then blend it. Yeah. So, so I've made my own, co I, you know, I got this idea from, uh, what is her name? Lorna Sass. She wrote a book called Great Vegetarian Cooking Under Pressure. I believe it was the first cookbook that was a vegan and for the pressure cooker. I could be wrong, but I do know it won a James Beard Award, which is a, if it's a very high compliment. And she was saying you could just easily make your own coconut milk. And I did. And this was before coconut, you know, now you can easily get coconut milk in a variety of different ways, boxes, cans, lower fat, higher fat. And you basically just take unsweetened coconut and water and then you blend it. And then you can put it through one of those either nut milk bags or paint straining bags. Mm -hmm. And what Mary McDougal does is she uses a little bit of coconut extract when when she's trying to do a curry to get that coconut flavor. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, I tried it with the coconut um, flakes, like what you said, and it actually worked. It was yeah. genius. And, an, and another thing people can do and they don't realize, and actually, you know, you don't know this, and I, I really need to start saying this at the beginning of the show. And the reason I haven't is because I'm so behind. Every guest that comes on the show, that lives in the United States, including Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico, gets two free samples of California balsamic vinegar and the flavor of their choice, thanks to our dear friend Thomas and Ethel at California Balsamic. And the coconut reminded me of that because I've used the coconut balsamic vinegar too, which has no fat, to create a coconut flavor in things that I wanted the coconut flavor. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Chris, Chris wants to know if, if you can use the same recipe for the pancakes to make waffle. Um, the, okay. So this one, always your first batch never comes out like the second one. Yeah. Yes, you can. In fact, I did it the other day, but I don't have a great waffle iron and I'll tell you why I never invested a lot into a really good ceramic coated waffle iron. Cause I just don't make them that much. Um, but yes, you can, you just have to leave them in there a long time, or you might have to spray or wipe a little bit of oil. Uh, mine just, this is so much easier to do it this way, but the, um, you can definitely put these in the waffle iron. You might want to make them a little bit thicker. Isn't it true your first batch of pancakes never come out like the second batch? It, absolutely. They still, they still taste good. But they'll good. still taste good. And I actually, I kind of like things a little bit more well done and crispy. So I yeah. would definitely eat those. Well, these are a little bit, um, a little denser. So you have to give them time to cook and then when you give them too much time to cook they get a little bit brown so i have my pancake wizard over here do you want to do you want to flip pancakes for me she's she's been doing this since she was three this is my daughter laura Hi. laura is um how old are you 23. <laughs> no, I know. She's 23. She just graduated from, from nursing school and she does the classes with me, the kitchen live. So it's, you've done a lot of cooking classes with me too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can, can I ahead. ask you a question, Laura? Yeah. So like Colin Campbell is your grandfather is like, is that a big deal to you? Or is he just grandpa? Because he's like, you know, a rocks. I mean, I think when people think of the plant-based world, he's kind of at the top of the food chain. Like he is the most beloved and you know, that's <laughs> just what I think. Yeah. And so like to you, is he grandpa or like, do you realize like who he is? I didn't really realize until I got a little older um, and I started traveling a little bit and people abroad would say, oh, I've read his book. And um, then I realized he's really well known, but he's still kind of grandpa. But yeah. Who was one of you guys went someplace or I can't remember that it's not quite done yet. In fact, you could turn it up a little bit went someplace and somebody was just in awe that his grandfather was T. Colin Campbell. And I, my son's name is Colin. And he said, Oh, I said, I, I didn't know. 
<laughs> and then he went on the cruise with us and you went on the cruise with us. And I think that was when you had the aha moment that, yeah, yeah, yeah that, I didn't realize for a long time. But so traveling around to kind of get a feel for it. She doesn't have a mic on, so I have to get close so you can. That's okay. There was a question, what temperature on the griddle? There is no temperature on that griddle, right? It's just on the oven. I think it's about 380 is what I have. It goes, the highest it goes to is 400. So I wanted to show you what I do because this is, you know, you were asking me about fruit and how I cook it. Every week I make, I don't know if you can see that. I make these, this is cherry. I make these fruit compotes and I put them in a mason jar. And when I wake up for breakfast, I have a dish of fruit compote, maybe a banana, and I might sprinkle some oats on it. That is probably one of my most common breakfasts. And one of these jars will last me about three days. And then I make another jar because it's just so easy. And then if I have a sweet tooth at night, which I don't have a real sweet tooth, I, I have a salt tooth, that's my problem. Um, but. I'll pull this out at night and I'll put it on top of maybe a frozen bananas because we like to whip those up or I'll put them on top of just a fresh banana. This is a really nice nighttime snack and it's just fruit. That's all it is. And you know what else it's really good on, Kim, is on a little piece of Japanese sweet potato. Really? Yeah, just like, you know, like you want just a tiny little snack. You just slice a little slice off, put a little of the chia jam. It's delicious. Okay, I just learned something new. Thank you, AJ. And That's if you if idea. you really want to go crazy, air fry that little slice of Japanese sweet potato first and then put the jam on. It'll blow your mind. Like a piece of toast. Exactly. Wow. That's okay. what I do. See, I take my Japanese or my Hannah's, I cook them, then I chill them, and that changes something in the resistant starch. Then I take them out, I slice them, then I smash it with my hand, and then I air fry it, and it is toast. It's sweet potato toast, and then you put the jam on, and you don't you don't miss bread anymore. Yeah, yeah, and I don't eat a lot of bread um, because bread doesn't do me any good. I like bread, but it doesn't. But, but that's a great idea. It's a great substitute. So. Um, all right, so I'm going to get a plate out because we are going to try these in front of you and make you all hungry. Can we share a plate, Laura? Mm -hmm. Take your fork. And these, I've, I've tested these so many times, and this recipe works every time if you have a nonstick pan. And you can see, I don't know if you can see underneath there, but the chia seeds got very gelatinous. Can you see, AJ? Can you see all this I can stuff? see it. It looks beautiful and delicious. Yeah. So think about it. This is what you're eating for breakfast, a potato, some oats, and some quinoa. You're not eating, you know, white flour and eggs and oil. Um, and I feel better after I've eaten these. They're not, they're not heavy. Well, they're, they're heavier, but they're not heavy like an egg pancake. Right. Wow. Okay, Yummy. that's my lunch today. Really good. Laura, what, Laura, what kind of nurse are you going to be? I'm not sure. Um, I'm really interested in preventative health, um, which isn't really, you know, what you get in the hospital so much. So I'm still kind of figuring that out. Maybe interested in labor and delivery, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Not sure just yet. I just graduated in December, so. You're living my dream. Yeah, yeah, she wanted to be a nurse, so. I wanted to be a nurse, and then I went to college for dietetics. I got so turned on with nutrition and what Colin was doing, and I went to um, school for dietetics. I lasted for about two years. I took all the sciences, and then I quit and transferred out of that into an education program because the nutrition that they were teaching was terrible. And if I had to do it over again, I just would have gone through it just to get wear that hat. But you know, when you're young and you think you know everything, um, I, I didn't finish the program, so I went into teaching. But I love teaching, and that was a lot of fun, and I did that for many years. I stayed home with the kids and taught you how to cook. Mm -hmm. They're great cooks. All three of them are plant-based, and they're, they're very good cooks, um, and they, they really enjoy this. They test all my recipes. They write my recipes. They do my social media. <laughs> Right. So it's great. Well, you have an open invitation, Laura, to come back on your own or with mom if you want to cook some more. That'd be wonderful. Okay. I have a few questions for you, Kim. They're going quickly, sure. so I'll ask them before they disappear. Claire wants to know what Vitamix you have. 
I have the Vitavix that you get at, at uh, Costco. Um, I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know what model it is. I, I apologize for that, but it's the one that Costco sells. And I will tell you it broke when I did in a cooking class, when I was supposed to do a cheese sauce, the motor broke. Um, so I took it back and they were really great. They replaced it. I'd only had it for like a year and a half and they, you know, Vitamix and Costco, they do a pretty good job of, of giving you replacements. I had a Vitamix that my mother-in-law bought me refurbished. I, I'll never forget when she bought me that the um, Vitamix because I thought, why do I want a blender? But smile and be nice. Thank you. <laughs> I had no idea that the Vitamix was as powerful as it is. So I bought her an instant pot a couple of years ago, and I think she thought, why, why do I want an instant pot? <laughs> so we kind of buy each other kitchen gadgets and things. Okay, well, and Mother's Day has passed, but maybe you can buy her a Breville for the next gift, because I promise you, once you get it, you'll be like, I can't believe I lived this long without it. Yeah. So Michelle says, if I can't eat oats, is there another grain that can be used? Um. I think, and I had a friend, you probably know Evelise Capot, um, she was on the cruise. She made this recipe and she said she used, instead of quinoa, she used millet. So I think you could probably use a combination of quinoa and millet and it would work. You'd have to kind of play around with it or you could just use whole wheat flour, but then it's no longer gluten-free. Um, but I would try millet. And Dina Marie says, can you make the compote with frozen fruit? Yes, that's how I that's how I normally do it. Um, I only buy only only do fresh if it's berry picking time. But yes, I, I take a great big bag of frozen fruit, dump it in the pan, and just let it cook down, and then put my chia seeds in there. Nice. So, and Judy yeah. says, "Where did your cookbook holder come from?" I think it came from Walmart. <laughs> yeah, they're hard to find. They're not 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 easy to find. Everything is hard to find right now. You know what? I actually have one in my Amazon store, Judy. I'll post the link to that because I, I really love having a cookbook holder as well. And there's a question, and maybe we can have Nelson talk about this when he comes on. Is, is there going to be a sequel, a Plant Pure Nation 2? I don't know. You'll have to ask him. You know, we've been talking about doing short videos, um, pushing those out with our media team, telling stories. Um, that's something that Nelson's really passionate about. We're going to be doing a lot of webinars with uh, Colin, his, his Colin Campbell. Um, so that'll, that'll be really fun. So uh, there isn't anything right now in the, but you know, you, you never know. Nelson's kind of a wild guy. You never know what he's got up his sleeve. Um, but, but that also reminds me, um, I wanted to mention what we are doing at Plant Pure Nation. We, um, we have Plant Pure Communities, which is our nonprofit organization. They offer all kinds of resources and it's where our pod net network is housed. We have a pod here in Mebane. Um, I urge you, if you want to hang out with like-minded people and get involved in community projects, join a pod. You can do that by going to plantpurecommunities.org. We have frozen, a frozen line of food here at Plant Pure. You can order it online at our website. We have 20 different entrees. You can also go to the grocery store and Publix carries it, Shaw's carries it. Um, we have several other grocery stores that are talking about carrying at Kroger's, um, Harris Teeter. So check out if you, if you have a grocery store nearby, we have 12 ounce meals at, um, at the grocery store and 16 ounce meals on our website. And then we have Plant Pure Kitchen Live. Um, so I hope that you will check out all the things that we are doing here at Plant, Plant Pure Nation. So I love my job. I love everything we do and I'm very passionate. The kids are passionate about what we do. Um, and it's, it's great that you're promoting and doing the things you do as well, AJ, because such a small amount of the population is plant-based and we need to do everything we can to get everybody doing this because our planet is burning up is what I want to say. Um, you know, and now we've got viruses and it's just so important that we all um, begin to transition to a plant-based diet. So Inez wants to know, do these pods only happen in the United States or can someone outside of the United States do them as well? All over the world, all over the world. Um, they're in Australia, they're in England, they're, they're everywhere. So yeah, you, 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 if you go to their website, Plant Pure Communities, there's a little locator and you can find what pods are located where. And if you, if you have any problems, you can message them at Plant Pure Communities and they will be able to connect you with a near, nearby pod or start a pod. 
Um, just, you know, start with the, with a small group, maybe two or three people, and then just kind of grow it. It doesn't have to be 50 people when you start, just a small group. So that where there's comments that your, your entrees of your, of your are delicious. So uh, which stores have them? And for the stores that don't have them, you're saying they're ship frozen. People can get them that way. Yes. Um, the grocery stores that carry them now are, are Publix, Shaw's, Harris Teeter. Um, and we're talking to Kroger's and hopefully we'll get them into Wegmans eventually, but Publix, Shaw's, Harris Teeter. And I, I feel like I'm missing one. I probably am, but those are 12 ounce meals. On, on, there's only five different entrees to choose from. If you want to go to our website, we have 20 entrees and those are 16 ounce meals. There's a lot, lot more variety and it gets delivered to your door. So if you don't want to go to the grocery store, it gets delivered right to your door. So. That's incredible. And, but the, the ones that are available in person, it's not everywhere in the United States yet, right? Um, the, the, yeah, we only deliver, we, yeah, we only make it available in the U.S., Right. But I mean, like, I didn't even was aware, like where I live in Southern California, will I be able to find these in my store? Oh, in the grocery store. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about online. Um, yes, the, mostly they're East Coast. And we we are working on getting them out to the West Coast. That's our goal. Nice. That's terrific. And so uh, somebody's asking, uh, uh, they didn't know, also didn't know you had a new book. And when, when did that book come out? And are you going to have any more books? Um, that book came out, this book came out in... Um, I think it was two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. So I wrote it about two years after the first one. And I had a plan to write a new cookbook and I have all of the recipes and I will do that eventually. But right now I'm really passionate about everything we have going on at Plant Pure. I love teaching. Um, I'm working on this Plant Pure Kitchen Live program. And most of those recipes that we do on Thursday evenings are all new. So eventually, but you know, a cookbook is it's a lot of work <laughs> from the from the recipe development all the way to the pictures and then editing with your publisher so I just kind of took a break from that and I really enjoy putting my recipes on the website you can go to plantpurenation.com all of my recipes are on the website yeah that's amazing a lot of people are commenting how delicious the food was and Catherine was able to find it in Publix. So that's great. Let's see. Uh, Amber saying your recipes are fantastic. Jan, the recipe with the sauces, I think she has sauces in both books, but she was saying the second book was really very saucy. Very, very saucy. That was, that was Nelson's orders. He said, put a lot of sauces in them. And my cookbooks have a lot of entrees in them. Most cookbooks have around between 12 and 14 entrees. I'm well in the twenties with entrees. Cause I feel like when I buy a book, I want to, I want to know what, what meals I can make. I don't buy a book because of breakfast because we don't really make big breakfasts, but um, there's a, it's, it's very heavy in entrees, very heavy in sauces and very light in desserts. I don't have a ton of desserts because we don't eat a lot of desserts. Mm -hmm. so. so Linda is sometimes people join lives as asking for the name of your cookbook. Maybe you could show both of them up. Okay. The second one is plant pure kitchen. And the first one is plant pure nation. Brian's going to zoom in so you can see him. Dean is asking what your favorite is. That's like asking me. That's like asking her who her favorite kid is. I, I know. You know, I'm sort of a mood eater. It depends on my mood. Um, in the wintertime, I like things like lasagna. Um, I will tell you my favorite. My favorite food is pizza. I love pizza. I everything pizza. So, um, when, when I'm having a, a long, hard day and it's a little stressful, Nelson will say, you want to go get pizza? Because I do like pizza. Um, and I like to make my own pizza. So I guess that's probably my favorite dish. But I like Indian. I love Mexican. So you're right, AJ. It's, it's like picking a child. Right. So, so who is your favorite child? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Snap Vegan says, hopes the Trader Joe's will eventually sell your entree. Chef Del Schroff is watching and he says, hello. So yeah. we, we, we always ask, well, we, I always ask because they always ask the, 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 the people watching, they want to know what you eat in a day and, and what you do for exercise. And lately people, because we're in quarantine, many of us still, they want to know what you're either what you're reading or what you're watching. Right. Okay. I'm reading, I read, um, Where the Crawdads Sing. Excellent book. That's the, what I just finished. Um, what do I eat in a day? I eat the berries for breakfast and I put a little bit of fruit on it and I add some oats most of the time. Sometimes I skip breakfast and just have a cup of coffee. 
I'm not a huge breakfast person. For lunch, almost every day, I have a potato, a baked potato, or I bake French fries. I love French fries. And then I have to make a big green salad, probably very similar to what you do, AJ. Um, I make an oil-free dressing to go on it. Lunch is really, really simple. I tend to eat probably two meals, either if I'm not eating breakfast, I'm eating lunch. If I'm not eating lunch, I'm eating breakfast. Um, and then for dinner, I tend to make a traditional, more comfort style meals. Last night, Nelson and I had um, portobello mushrooms and I broiled them with some barbecue sauce. We had mashed potatoes and I, I steamed up some broccoli. Really, really simple. I mean, sometimes if it's just the two of us, we don't eat really complicated. Um, I'll make enchiladas and I make a dish and then we'll have it for two or three days and we freeze it. So um, I, I eat really simply and I, I tend to eat the same things. And, and I think you probably do too. I think we all do. Yeah, absolutely. I find it's just, it's cheaper and it's easier. It takes a lot less time. And, and, you know, it's interesting because I'm actually hosting an online summit based on gut health. And I'm interviewing these top GI doctors that nobody's ever heard of because they're not necessarily plant-based. And one of the things they were saying is that one of the reasons, well, I shouldn't give it, I shouldn't give this up because you got to watch the summit, but I'll give you a hint. Dogs do not have the same kind of GI problems that humans do because they eat simply and they eat the same thing every day. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's really true because your gut biome is used to one thing. And then when you start introducing things like you go to an Indian restaurant and you eat Indian food, you know, you can have some issues. Um, I had in my younger years, um, I had a little bit touch of IBS and I think it was more some of the things I'm not drinking enough liquids and I don't know, maybe eating too fast. I don't, I don't know what the reason was, but I don't have it at all now. Um, and I, you know, we get better at this with time. So we've, we've gotten so much better than we were back in the eighties and nineties. So your gut biome is, is huge and it, um, it, 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 it's definitely indicative of what you eat. Um, Michelle says she loves your recipe for creamy asparagus soup with mushrooms and she posted it. So thank you very much. And did, are you, a, are you a big exercise fanatic or are you like, oh, exercise. like yes. So Laura just stepped out. Um, but Laura's, she's probably my biggest walking partner. We walk I walk on average three to four miles a day, sometimes five. So I'm, I'm, I'm walking probably 20 plus miles a week. I love to walk and then I, I swim. So yeah, I, I like to walk and I don't, I walk more for mental health than anything because it just makes me feel good to get outside and get some fresh air and, and move. I used to run when I was younger, but I don't have those kinds of knees anymore. Do the Campbells have any pets? We have a pet, we have a Cocker Spaniel. Um, oh. All the kids have, Laura has a Cocker Spaniel too. Yes, we do. We have a cat and a Cocker Spaniel. Good, yeah. I love that you guys have pets. That's great. Well, this has been wonderful. You are just such a talented recipe creator and chef and such a lovely person. And I so appreciate you doing this and uh, you're welcome to come back with any parts of your family, even the ones I've never met, if they want to come on, they have the Campbell's have an open invitation. Okay. We'll get through all. And, and I, you know, I've never met the sister Leanne. I've never met her. Oh, okay. She lives in North Carolina too. So I will share with her that she might want to do a show with you. She's also a, a very good cook. She cooks a lot of Dominican food because she lives part-time in the Dominican Republic. So, and she's very, a very big gardener. So um, that would be fun too. But, but AJ, I really appreciate you having me on here. I'm, a, I'm an AJ fan. I watch your videos and I absolutely love what you're doing this month with these plant-based doctors and really empowering people with their health. Well, thank you. We're on, we're all, we all are on this. We got with slightly few little tweaks here and there, but we are all on the same team and unity for for going plant-based, especially now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, come back tomorrow. It will be noon tomorrow just because uh, that's how it will be until June 1st when every day will be at 11 a.m. That Jennifer says this has been so informative. So that's a new word, I guess, informative and fun. So go go try the recipes that we've posted for the pancakes. We posted the lemon bar recipes. And if you don't have plant pure nation, get that. And if you don't have the new one, get that. And this has been great. Thanks again, Kim. This has just been wonderful. Thank you, AJ. Have a good day, everybody.